thank you very much. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, giving me the chance to speak here. Special thank to Jamir for all the help and uh, all the efforts. And I will talk about uh, uh, a system, many body system driven dissipative, which uh, shows both uh, uh, ordering, disordering transition and entanglement uh, transition. And uh, we, are, we were in this work largely motivated in trying to, to see uh, a system, a model system, model dynamics, which could be uh, implemented with uh, entrapped ion. So after two experimental talks, uh, I should be very careful in uh, saying what I mean uh, in uh, implementation, but let's say at least uh, you will see that there are several elements which uh, we think can be uh, 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 um, realized there. And uh, this work uh, uh, um, has been performed uh, with a collaboration between us in PISA with several people uh, scattering uh, all over the places afterwards with uh, Guido Pagano and uh, uh, people in Paris in the group of Marco Spiro. So we have been collaborating uh, on several works. What I'm going to do today is just uh, mainly uh, present the result that uh, we, uh, we put in this uh, paper. So, uh, we already had uh, very nice uh, presentations and uh, insights in uh, um, entanglement uh, uh, transition. So I will be very brief. I just want to recap a couple of uh, uh, elements which are important for my presentation. So I will be concerned with uh, uh, many body open system driven by a lean blood like dynamics. And here, uh, a lot of nice uh, uh, critical behavior will emerge. I mean, this driven dissipative system has been subject, have been subject of uh, many, many papers. And uh, so here, I just mentioned a recent review by uh, Sebastian and collaborators. And all the action takes place because of the competition between the unitary part here and uh, the dissipation. Rho is the density matrix of the system. And this competition, so in the same way in which quantum phase transition uh, are driven by the competition between two non-computing ter com computing term in the Hamiltonian, here the competition between uh, let's say, uh, this unitary evolution, which will tend to a kind of ordering and uh, local dissipation will play a similar role. Um, all what I'm going to say will uh, take place in uh, the steady state. So I would like to understand uh, what happened at large times and uh, Dissipative phase transition can take place, and in the steady state, spont spontaneous symmetry breaking um, will, uh, may appear, not will, may appear. But there is another element which uh, is important now, that in general, the steady state will be mixed. And uh, it will be mixed and a non-equilibrium state. So this means that if I think to ground state or equilibrium, both in the case of the ground state and pure or the mixed state, everything is encoded in the eigenstate and uh, in the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian. Here, this is, not, this is not generally the case. So this means that correlations which ultimately will lead uh, to a symmetry breaking and quantum correlations, entanglement, may have completely different behavior. So we 
uh, would like to explore uh, this, both by looking at uh, ordering transitions, but also looking at entanglement. And here we can do uh, two things. So one can look at the entanglement in the steady state uh, witness uh, uh, that tells you what is the content uh, of uh, uh, entanglement in uh, generically mixed states. I just here uh, listed uh, uh, just uh, just few papers, but there are many, many more. Uh, we can also look uh, at multipartite entanglement in the density matrix, but the uh, path that I'm going to take uh, in this talk will follow uh, all the uh, presentation of yesterday and today. That is, I'm going to look at what happened uh, at the level of single trajectories. So here, the entanglement will produce uh, locally measurements on the system and in each single trajectory, uh, um, certain competition and between uh, uh, spreading of correlation and the action of the entanglement will take place uh, to lead uh, to what we had uh, several times by now, so I will just skip uh, this uh, this part. So, uh, in nutshell, what I'm going to discuss is just a, a model which will have both these transitions. And uh, so, actually, we were originally motivated by the fact that we would we wanted to understand uh, how if there is an interplay whatsoever, and uh, if one uh, of the two will affect the other. Um, so the model, I mean, I would say, is not really special in the sense uh, there are various generic features, but uh, we picked up uh, some uh, uh, features that uh, can be implemented with uh, ions. So, the model. So it's just a linear chain of uh, spins which will interact through uh, um, icing-like long-range coupling which are uh, subject to an external uh, transfer field. And uh, I would like to, I will consider the case of uh, power law decay and uh, just uh, as uh, generic uh, expectations and say when alpha uh, is small enough, long range coupling may lead uh, to some ordering in the uh, x direction. I mean, ordering should uh, uh, disappear. And this model, uh, has been studied, I mean, also in the presence of dissipation in several works, and uh, uh, I, I will say uh, <clears throat> something more of this. Then I have to tell you about uh, the non-unitary part, and for the non-unitary part, we just uh, consider the case in which we have local resetting, which is essentially means that uh, uh, Essentially, with a given probability p, if the state is in local state is down, this will not be touched. But if it's in up, then it will be flipped. And these are the three uh, Krauss, uh, corresponding Krauss operators that uh, will just define the dynamics. And essentially, this is the dynamics we have to, fo we have to follow. I mean, these are all the ingredients, so from now on I will present you uh, uh, the result. Now, let me be uh, uh, a bit more specific uh, for simplicity reasons, but I would say it's not really uh, relevant here. 
we just consider a kind of floquet uh, dynamics in which we have unitary, cross map, unitary, and so on and so forth, but it's not really uh, um, important. I would say the, 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 the results do not really depend on this, uh, on this choice. Essentially, by doing this, we are just forcing the, the jumps uh, induced by the entanglement, by the environment to take place at, uh, in given places, but uh, otherwise would be, there will be a randomness in the way jumps occur. And uh, most of the numerics is done by just uh, applying this, uh, uh, this two-step Hamiltonian. Again, we just consider just the full evolution really uh, not much different is there. So as far as the average, we have to, I have to distinguish between quantum averages and uh, average over trajectories, and this will make uh, as uh, clearly uh, a differences. Now, this model has some nice features. I mean, uh, trapped ions allow to explore uh, the dependence on the range of interaction, and this uh, plays uh, an important role uh, here. As far as uh, uh, the Krauss operator that we consider, it essentially can be implemented with, uh, with, optical, uh, with optical pumping locally on the spin. So even though that I think this model has all the uh, complexity in r being realized experimentally that we heard uh, in the previous talk. Uh, I think this is uh, <coughs> a viable option. Now, first of all, the symmetry uh, breaking transition. Now, uh, yes. It, we will span the alpha from zero to two, three. You will see. I will present some results depending on alpha. Okay. So, for sufficiently long range interaction, which means alpha close to zero, but I will tell you how close it should be. Then, uh, so, without going into much detail, so, Already, uh, uh, mean field uh, is enough, and essentially, depending on the, the transfer field here on the x-axis and uh, this, the probability of resetting, there is a, a transition between uh, a ferromagnetic to a paramagnetic. This is, I mean, other languages called has been called the Sibadi phase transition, okay? It's just a phase transition induced by the competition between <coughs> uh, Hamiltonian and, uh, uh, and damping. And uh, it has this, uh, um, this shape here, which essentially tells you that if H is very large, then basically you just have kind of averaging, dynamical averaging that destroys the uh, ordering, but also if H is close to zero, then essentially uh, you're not putting uh, the right dynamics, and so order parameter will be shrank at each uh, uh, damping uh, part, and uh, essentially ordering is, uh, will be destroyed. I mean, this, so, Well, it's singular because we are taking the steady state, which means that the limit p going to zero, t going to infinity, does they do not commute. So we are always taking t to infinity and then p to zero. Th this is, so, I, I did not mention, but this is the limit I'm taking. <clears throat>
So uh, you can see this, so for instance, in the, in the mean field, so essentially when h is zero, the effective uh, mean field is only along the x direction, okay? So the order parameter does not evolve during the unitary part, but each time you do the cross part, the sx is shrank by a factor one minus p. So you need this extra unitary evolution which uh, actually to induce coherence. Okay, uh, sorry, to induce ordering. Um, so, this is uh, just the result of uh, mean field, but uh, we just checked uh, in various ways numerically uh, on finite systems. And uh, for this, I think it's alpha 0 0.5. So, we just look at correlators and just look at the asymptotics, and essentially the extrapolation we can do as a function of this should be h over j, is more or less in good agreement with the mean field. Now, in order to be more precise in determining the transition with alpha, then we just look at the Binder cumulant. Now, when alpha is equal to zero, this is very nice, so you can use uh, an additional permutational symmetry, so you can really go to very large system sides, and then you got uh, <coughs> good agreement, uh, sorry, you got exactly the, the, the critical P at the given uh, uh, H field. You can do the same scaling for uh, finite alpha, of course, Needless to say, here we are confined uh, on much, much larger, uh, smaller sizes. Let, let me say that uh, what we did, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know, call it sanity check or whatever. So we just took these sizes also in this case, and we got consistent result. At least we think that in this way, the, our finite size scaling uh, uh, at finite alpha is still uh, very reasonable. And this is Jamir, the picture probably you are thinking of. This is the critical, the given H is the critical P probability as a function of the range of the interaction. Uh, you measure here, it's defined, this is the, Yeah. I think you, you well, uh, I think uh, Binder Cumulant gives you a much better finite size scaling analysis. Okay. And uh, so this is the critical probability as a function of alpha. And then you see that, I mean, essentially this is the long range part, but as long as you go uh, to, shorter range, let's say of the order one, then this ordering transition disappear. And uh, indeed, uh, if you look at the larger value of alpha, short range, you see the correlation along the x direction uh, are completely uh, vanishing. Nevertheless, this means, I mean, this does not imply that uh, this region here is featureless, as we uh, heard several times in this case, because uh, entanglement may show additional critical behavior. Now, uh, I will be, uh, uh, so essentially here, we just used uh, all the concepts that were introduced in several uh, papers, and they were discussed, for instance, in the, in the introductory talk by Matthew Fisher. We just look at the modal information, which should uh, somehow show a, um, a maximum or a peak at uh, the transition, so it should be essentially going to zero, 
uh, in the area, in the volume phase, this is what we get for the system size we are able to look. And uh, let's say uh, the scaling is, the collapse is feasible. So this is what, this is what we get with this uh, exponent. And you see that essentially similar behavior is there both for alpha small, where there is a long range ordering, and when alpha is very large, so no ordering uh, has remained. So in order to understand uh, better this, the location of the transition, we also explored the entropy. So let me say here, essentially we are looking for a volume law and we are searching for how, to, uh, to how this exponent, uh, sorry, how this prefactor of the L dependent scales with P. So of course we are not able to see a sharp transition. This is what we get both in, uh, uh, in various cases for finite alpha, but say if we combine these results with, uh, with, uh, with the mutual information, then we get uh, quite a good uh, uh, agreement. Uh, so there is at much lower P a transition, and this is somewhat expected. So essentially ordering does not require the, I mean, fragile, uh, coherence associated with uh, entanglement. So you can have uh, a mixed state, which is ordering, but so first you destroy quantum correlation and then you destroy classical, in a sense, correlations. Uh, we also uh, trying to match uh, possible uh, experimental uh, uh, realization, we just look at uh, what has been measure, mentioned uh, in the previous talk, so the ancilla uh, uh, decoupling with an ancilla qubit, so the residual entropy of this ancilla with the rest of the chain. Say so here, uh, I think the scaling analysis, I mean, it's, we should take with some grain of salt. Let's say what you are using here are information that uh, uh, we are collecting also from previous uh, analysis. And uh, as you see, then uh, we are just uh, close to the end. Uh, this is the phase diagram that we get. So there is a, a dissipative uh, transition between ferromagnet to paramagnet. However, inside the order transition, there is an additional uh, entanglement uh, uh, change between volume and let's say area or subvolume. So we, this we are not um, we are not able to ascertain. And uh, if we look at the transition as a function of alpha, then you will see that while the ordering transition is very sharply dependent on the range of the interaction. Actually, uh, the entanglement transition is uh, much weakly dependent and actually will survive at very large, uh, at a very short uh, ranges. And uh, with this, I will conclude. Uh, I, I skip the experimental. I'm, a, I'm ashamed in talking about the experimental realization just after the two talks. And so I will stop here. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>